Hey everyone, this is Shintai, host of the Anime Room, and with me again, I have my good friend David, host of Sex God Anime Reviews. How are you doing, man? It's good to be back. I'm glad you feel that way, because we had a very interesting discussion last time about school days. Oh yeah. Now we're going to have another discussion about another show that you recommend me called Yosuga no Sora, which I feel will be just as, if not more interesting than the last discussion. I actually prefer this anime school days. This show is far better. I actually agree with you on that. Judging by how you like school days, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> So go on. Please tell me. I'm very curious. Well, first of all, what do you think I think of the show? You said you like the soundtrack. Yes, the soundtrack in this show is incredible. I have no complaints about the soundtrack. It is beautiful. Above average. That's what I think you think of the anime. Okay, that's interesting. I hated it. <laughs> 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 wow, wow. I didn't hate it as much as School Days, but yeah, fuck this show. <laughs> oh, go, go on, go on. I want to hear your criticism. Go on, take it away. I was telling you before, before we started recording, that I wrote down notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I've never done this for a show before or anything before. I segmented it like this. There was the pros and then there was the cons. Pros have about 12. Cons are over 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I'm not going to say everything that I have written down. It's just a guideline. Yeah, this is very funny. You're recommending me shows that I'm actually really liking, and then I recommend you this. <laughs> to be fair, you did recommend me two other shows that I really adored. I loved Madoka Magica. That's become one of my favorite anime. Very charmed by Yamada's first time. I really liked that show, too. Not as much as Madoka Magica, but it was a really fun show. <laughs> But back to Yosuke no Sora. But yeah, fuck Yosuke no Sora. Come on, tell me why. I want to debate you about this. Before I trash it, I do want to say, first of all, it handled the theme of incest very maturely. But it's still fucking incest. I'm being a little unfair when I say that because it is something that some people care about. It is a topic that people care about. Some, I guess. So I guess it is a little unfair of me to just say fuck it because that's incest. Yosuke no Sora is the only anime I know of that actually uses is incest as a very serious plot device. I mean, you mentioned Big Gata H. Kai. There's that redhead character in it who fancies a brother and has a shrine to him and stuff. That's comedic. And Kara no Kyokai as well. In the sixth movie, it's mostly about the main character's sister who has incestuous feelings toward her brother. Even in there, it's kind of making fun of her for it. It's kind of played up for laughs and it's not really anything that's taken all that seriously. I feel a little unfair just going like, fuck it because I was talking about incest. But at the same time, I can't help that I am physically repulsed and I will give them credit in that respect. They managed to get that kind of a reaction out of me. I just remember when I first saw it, the biggest mindfuck episode for me was episode 11, when Haru and Sora have accepted their relationship and they just start banging each other. And then there's the end of the episode where um, Nayu and that other girl, what's her name? He's not one of the girls that Haru bangs. She is completely irrelevant. Except for those final couple of episodes, which makes me think, why was she there at all? Other than she was probably a route in the visual novel, but wasn't as popular as the other girls, and they decided not to give her her route in the show. It could have been some other character if they wanted to have been the one to talk to the main character about that and react that way about those situations. She basically represents the audience who is disgusted by the incestuous part of this anime. She obviously rejects it throughout all the anime. I can see that. Before I bash it some more, I will say that it's a very good looking show. It's not the best, but this is a good looking show. I'd say it's significantly above average. But the CGI looked like shit. I was just like, why is this CGI? It's so distracting and adds nothing. It's just there and it doesn't even look very good. I had a huge problem with the different arcs and the way that it was presented. When you compare it to something like Clannad, 
where they were brilliant enough to take the different routes for the different girls, subtract a romantic element, and have it flow seamlessly in between each other, that made for a much more natural flowing show. And even in another show, Higurashi, which does the same thing that Yosuga no Sora did, goes up to a certain point, it ends, and then it resets, Higurashi actually had an explanation as to why it did that and what the purpose of it was. In Yosuga no Sora, though, there is no explanation. It simply is. I didn't like that because it made me feel that the different arcs were very disconnected and fairly irrelevant to each other. It's meant to be different universes because at the end of each arc it says end and then it resets. Yeah, but in doing that, it just makes me feel that the majority of the show is pointless. You have those arcs, it turns out none of them are actually real, and that the only episodes that actually matter are episodes 1, 2, 7, 10, 11, and 12. It's considered the true arc. So it makes me feel that the other arcs don't matter. Well, I think it's how you look at it, because you could say the other arcs were real as well. If you remember, in the preview right before it goes into the incest arc, Sora says those were all of Haru's dreams due to his uncertainty. I don't watch the preview, so I don't know that. <laughs> she said that at the end of episode 9, for the preview going into 10. Along with this and the bit in the school days thing where you said about the blood, I'm learning a lot. Which girl did you like the most? My favorite girl was Amatsume. She was my favorite girl because she was very fun, she was kind of spunky, and she genuinely seemed like a very nice girl and someone I would like to hang out with. As opposed to Migiwa, which I don't even know how to describe her personality. She was so bland to me. The only thing I really liked about her, other than her being attractive, was that she played the violin, which I thought was nice. And Nao was very bland as well to me. There was nothing about her personality that I cared about. Oh, Nao is a bitch. I hate her. <laughs> I didn't hate her. She just, whatever. I didn't care. Sora is a fucking cunt. I hated her. Why'd you hate Sora? Because she's just a cranky bitch the entire time. She's so unsociable. Because she's got a disease of some kind that makes her bones frame. Yeah, but she's still a cranky cunt to everyone. Even her brother. I'm sure you would be if your parents die and all you have is your twin brother now. I don't think I would start being like a cynical cranky asshole to everyone. I think I'd just be depressed. Well, she is kind of depressed, and all she likes is Haru, because Haru's been at her side practically all her life. Yeah, but she even treats him like shit. She's like a sundere, where she treats him like shit most of the time, but then there's moments here and there where she's like, No, wait, come back, I love you. I think that she probably just realized that what she said had hurt Haru. Come back, Haru. Here's something else I didn't like. Why does every girl in that show, except for one, immediately fall in love with this guy? He's not like Makoto. That's actually one of the things I do like about the show. Except for the final arc, Haru is a rather decent person. He's a nice guy, for the most part, and I didn't really have much of an issue with him until the final arc, where he started doing some morally questionable shit. Well, he was just coming to terms with his feelings. He still went about it a very bad way. I hate that these girls are saying that they, they've fallen in love with this guy, when all they know is, Oh my god, he's cute. Fuck that shit! Nao's got a reason because she knew since they were 13. She raped him! Why I hate her because she raped him and she's a bitch about it. She wasn't a bitch about it. She was traumatized by it. She thought she ruined him. Oh, I was traumatized by raping him. Wouldn't Hari be traumatized? Well, no, clearly he liked it. She thought that she really hurt him, and she felt really bad about it. I don't agree, I didn't think she was a bitch at all. I thought she was a reasonable character. You liked her to Sora, really? She was way better than Sora. <laughs> Sora was just a cranky cunt. She's not a cranky cunt. Yeah, she is. <laughs> She's a likable cranky cunt. She's so unsociable to everyone, and the only person that gives a shit about her, she treats like shit. In the other arcs, she does actually come around, like at the end of Nair's arc. That was something else I was scratching my head at, and I was just like, what in the actual fuck? Where the lightning just came down on the shed out of nowhere, and then she left the fucking bunny in there, and then now ran in to save the bunny. What the f 
fuck? Who's gonna nearly kill themselves over a fucking bunny rabbit? Not even a real bunny, a fucking stuffed one! The bunny holds significance because it's the bunny that I think it was either the mum or the dad gave her. So it's a precious bunny. Now didn't know that. She probably did. There was no indication that she did or did not. Well, because she loves Hari so much, and Hari loves his sister, she's gonna go out of her way to please his sister by helping her, I get the bunny. I understand why she did it. I'm saying the concept of risking your life for a stuffed toy is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of the sentimentality behind the object, you are getting yourself nearly killed for a fucking toy. Oh god. That whole scene, I was just watching, I was like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> and here's another problem. The arcs I felt were way too short. Only two episodes for the first two arcs, and three episodes for the last two arcs. They went by too fast and didn't feel developed enough. Particularly the romances. I think the only romance that really felt like it had any believability was Amatsume's because they knew each other as kids and they had a lot of fun as kids. Even now, even though they knew each other as kids, they didn't show us much in the flashbacks to really show that they were really great friends or anything. It was just, she raped him. And I love romances. I am a sucker for a good romance. And these romances, I felt nothing from. Except for a little bit Amatsume's. And even then, that romance wasn't all that good to me. And they went by too quickly. It was just like, all of a sudden, oh, I love you. And I don't like that. I think romances are a gradual build. That's why I think the romance in Clannad between Tomoya and Nagisa is so good because it takes a very long time for the two of them to grow closer to each other and fall in love with each other. They've got like 48 episodes counting both seasons to set it all up. So you think Yosuke and Azura should have been about 24, 25 episodes? If it was longer, then I'm sure the romances would have developed much better and would have been more believable. But even then, I really despise the fact that these girls just see a pretty face and then just fall in love. That's why I was pissed off that the store owner chick, who was arguably the best girl in that damn show, did not get her own route. She did not like the main character much at all. In that, the main character would have actually had to go through some effort in order to get her to care about him. And that would have been interesting because all the other girls were so easy. He had to go through no effort to get any of the girls to care for him. When the character doesn't go through any sort of obstacles in order to achieve any of these goals, it just feels like there was really no meaning behind it for me. I do see your point even now. You told me you like really long animes like with 25, 26 episodes. To me, that's a long anime, because most of the animes I watch are really short, <laughs> because I find it hard to be devoted to a show that is really long. I think 25, 26 is average. Really, I think 25 and 26 is long, in my opinion. My average is 12. <laughs> For me, something around 50 episodes is where it starts to get long. The first time I saw this anime, what really surprised me about it, because there was no hint towards it, was how open and explicit nudity and sex is for an anime. What did you think about that? It didn't bother me at all. It didn't bother you? Okay. I'm not approved for that kind of thing. Most of the anime I've seen, usually it's implied nudity, like a side boob or something like that and really bad censorship. There's no censored version of Yosuke Masura. It's all uncensored, which is interesting. Did you think it was fan service? I didn't think the sex scenes were fan service because they made sense in the context of the show. These are kids that are, I don't want to say in love because that's not what I see it as. They liked each other, so they had sex. That's what kids do when they care about each other. I didn't see that as fan service. I just saw it as the natural progression of a relationship. To me, the show had fan service when it was stuff outside of that where the boobs would jiggle or you'd get a panty shot. It wasn't as bad as some other shows, but it did have some of it. I always thought the nudity in the show in a way is actually vital to the plot in some ways and actually does show character progression. In episode 11, there's that scene after they've had sex. There's a casual conversation between Hara and Sora and Sora is just wandering around naked and she doesn't care, Hari doesn't care, and it does show progression there. Sora no longer cares, and Hari no longer cares, because in the previous episodes, when Sora was flirting with him, he pushed her away. It shows that their relationship is developing. 
What was that girl's name that you like? I'm at Sume. There's some random scenes in there where it just shows her skinny dipping for no reason. Yeah, that always felt really random to me. I was just like, why is she doing this? There's no context for it. It's just, oh, she likes skinny dipping. There was no explanation why. Which also leads me to something else. I can understand why Sora can't swim. But there was no explanation as to why Haru can't swim. 